happy new week dearly beloved wow what a joy and what a time to be alive we owe god some gratitude can we worship him together bow your head and um, let's say a word of prayer thank you heavenly father for being god you are god all by yourself and you don't need anybody to be the God you are. We worship, adore, and extol you. We will never bow down to any other God. We will never kiss Baal in this life for whatever reason. We thank you so very much for considering us to be your sons. Be exalted forever. Thank you for the gift of your word. As I speak your word, I ask that you will control my lips. May I not say the things that are not relevant and cause me to say the things that are relevant to my viewers. Unto you alone be glory, even as the heavens open unto this program. In Jesus' unction-producing name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I'm bringing you a message on the topic, remove the diadem. Remove the diadem. Last week, I brought my message from Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 26. Now, I have a lot of things to say from this portion of scripture and trust me by the grace of God I could preach from this for one whole month next week if Jesus tarries I'll still be reading from this scripture but I will suddenly bring you another topic but the topic for today is remove the diadem Ezekiel 21 26 Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem, take off the crown, this shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. Thus saith the Lord. I took time last week to let you understand the kind of God we are talking about, that I am talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth. Jehovah is his name. El Shaddai is his nature. And he is a speaking God. Remember, I challenged you that if your God does not speak, cross over to my God. He is the speaker of my house. If your God has stopped speaking, please cross over to my God. Today, we are concerned with what my God is saying. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. What is the Lord saying? He says, remove the diadem and take off the crown. And somebody is imagining, somebody is wondering, what is a diadem? A diadem is simply a crown. But I was imagining personally, if diadem is the same thing as crown, why did God have to also mention crown after mentioning the diadem? So I considered in my mind that diadem are crowns worn by male kings while crown are the ones worn by female kings you know females with crown what crown are we even talking about we are talking about demonic crowns and i'd like for you to know in case you did not know that agents of satan witches and wizards evil men have crowns on their head spiritual crowns the ones you may not see with your eyes but i want to let you know that those crowns are there and pastor please how do they acquire their crowns 
they acquire their crowns by the hard box they commit by the people they kill, by the number of people they are able to, 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 to damn and to frustrate, by the number of destinies that they have scuttled, that is how they get their crown. So, be, beloved of God, I want you to know that Satan and his agents, you know, agents of Satan have their crowns. It is only the church, unfortunately, that seem not to understand that there are also righteous crowns for righteous people. The, the, it is the church that seem not to understand that there is there are crowns called the crown of righteousness, the crown that we will receive in eternity for living a righteous life for God. It is the church that does not seem to understand that there are crowns that are gotten by reason of soul winning, by depopulating hell and populating heaven. How do I know the church seem not to understand? Because of the way we live our lives. We live carelessly and the extreme grace preachers are not doing us good. You know, they're not helping matters. You know, letting people know that you can live the way you like and it does not matter. And God is no longer angry at sin. The way people live, I don't know when last, as a child of God watching me from wherever you're watching me with whatever device, when last did you talk about Jesus? When last did you preach the undiluted word of God when you enter a KK, you know, when you enter a bus, a taxi, an aircraft? When last did you tell somebody who is, who is schooling together with you? When last did you tell somebody at work? When last did you tell somebody in your compound about the love of God and about the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, you know, the church seemed to be at ease in Zion. It is only in church that people expect that they have to be begged and begged and followed up before they come to church, followed up before they win a soul for the Lord. It is only church that has to, you know, provide a free bus service before they come to convention, before they attend a program in church. When last did you hear that Witches and wizards offer free boss to go for their meetings, to go for their communion. When last did you even take the communion? Don't mind these guys that say there's no more communion. See, when last did you take it? I want to let you know that witches and wizards take their communion every night. And yet, they don't complain. They don't complain of being sick, of being weak, of being broke. It is only the children of God that seem not to, you know, understand that there is a crown for soul winning. When last did you win a soul for the Lord? When last did you attend your church convention with a new convert? And yet, witches and wizards don't go to their meeting alone. They go with new converts. I came this morning to great man of God. He, he, he is, he's a great figure for God. The, the larger you are, the bigger you are, not physically big, of course, the bigger you are in your own field, the more the devil pursues you because he knows that his crown will be big. Man of God, I want you to know that if God has elevated you, it is not time to let down your guard because the enemy is targeting you. He knows if he gets you, if he kills you, if he brings you down, if he makes you backslide, if he makes you begin to teach wrong doctrines, he has succeeded in being promoted. And so his crown becomes larger. His reward becomes bigger. But can I prophesy to you, dear colleague, no power will bring you down. Nobody will kill you. Nobody will bring you down 
just to have a crown in the world of darkness. Whoever is waiting to use you to have promotion in the realm of witches and wizards and the powers of darkness, I came to let you know that they have failed because your God is on your side. I decree and declare we will not hear bad news against you or about you and vice versa. My God will fight your battles. My God will stand for you. If you have a good hearts and you are worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth and you're serving him with the whole of your heart in sincerity, my God will keep you from falling. No power will kill you. No force will kill you. Nobody will eliminate you and testify tomorrow. I decree and declare you're not one of those people will kill and then testify tomorrow. You're not one of those that people will eliminate and then testify tomorrow. I prophesy that while they are yet nursing that plan, the spirit of the Lord will hit them. The fire of the Lord will devour them because you have a destiny to fulfill and I decree and declare that nobody, nobody, no power, no group of forces will be able to make you scuttle that destiny. You will not die and leave the assignment heaven has for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know that there is a good news that I bring to you this morning next week. If Jesus tarries, I'll tell you the part of God. After you have removed the diadem and taken off the crown of the agents of darkness, God also has his part. But for now, it's your job. There are things God will not do for you. For instance, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus said, the signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. He did not say God will cast out devils for them. He said, in my name they shall speak with new tongues. He didn't say God will speak with new tongues for them. And uh, then in verse 18, it says they will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. He didn't say that God will come and lay hands on your behalf or God will come and heal on your behalf. Another portion of the scripture says heal the sick, cast out devils raise the dead. So you see, as a child of God, you have been empowered by heaven to do certain things. I want you to know that God will not come down and remove the diadem of the agents of the devil for you. God has saved you and empowered how are you to do to do the removing? Because just in case they had already begun to have their diadem and crowns because of the destruction and havoc they have wrecked in your family, God says, I have empowered you to remove. Come on, in the name of Jesus, can you do some prophetic actions? Begin to remove those diadem. All those people that have gotten some crowns and gotten some diadems in your family and they're boasting around the boasting of the people they have eliminated. They are boasting about your father they killed, your mother they killed. Uh, come on, come on, in the name of Jesus, I empower you right now to begin to remove those diadem. I prophesy, it does not matter how much they boast. Uh, their boasting is nothing because your destiny is different from the destiny of your parents. They may have killed your father. They may have killed your mother. They may have killed your uncle. They may have killed people in your family. But I came to let you know that their power has been stripped from them. They have been stripped of their diabolical power because of the anointing of God upon your life. For greater is he that is in you, child of God, than he that is in the world. What killed your father shall not kill you. What destabilized your mother is not permitted to destabilize you. Come on. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Begin to remove those diadem. B begin to take off those crowns in the name of Jesus. Because until you you do this until you you rip these people of their power until you rip them of of that their 
power. Things will continue to be like they are. Nothing is working in your life. Nothing is working in your family. Nobody is making it. Nobody is able to cross abroad. Nobody is able to pass exams. Nobody is able to proceed for youth service. Nobody is able to marry. Nobody is able to have children. Things will continue like this until you read these guys of their power. And God has given you the power to demobilize them. He says remove the diadem. From today you shall no longer cry before your enemies. You shall not go to kneel before them and beg them. Come on. The reverse is supposed to be the case that the ones to come and beg you to leave them alone. Not you going to beg them or going to the village to beat some gong and ask them to please leave you alone. You're not the one to give them wine. The, the ones to come to you to give you some bottles of wine or cartons of wine and say please let me be. Leave me alone. You are more dangerous than you know, child of God. You're more dangerous than you think. Come on, begin to to rope, to de-rope them of their crown. To remove every power they have in the name of Jesus. What works in other compounds, those diabolical forces that work in other compounds are not supposed to work where you live. Uh, you know, altars that are powerful are supposed to lose their power immediately you pack into that compound or immediately you build in that environment. Those altars that used to work against people and their destinies are not supposed to work anymore. Come on, I came with good news. You have the power to remove their diadem and to take off their crown because God says that when you do these things shall no longer remain the same. I, I, one of the things that pain me most is the way these guys brag. They say if you go to the moon you'll see me. You go to the sun you'll see me. You go to the depth of the river you'll see me. And I wonder are they omnipresent? I came to let you know these guys have no such power that just like dogs that bark but they cannot bite. In the name of Jesus I command the forces of darkness to lose their grip from over your life, from your family, from your destiny, from your marriage, from your business, from your your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever they took from you in the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I restore to you sevenfold. I restore to you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm had eaten. Get ready to get back. Get back what the enemy stole from you. Get back Oh, those wasted years. Uh, your wasted years are about to be restored to you. I see you smile. Oh, yes, yes, I see you smile this season because my God has come through for you. The Bible says in our text, things shall no longer be the same. Glory be to God. I, 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 I expected you to scream, glory, type the glory. Type there, things will no longer remain the same for me. I'm living this level. Oh my God, say that when you remove the diadem of the agents of hell and you take off their crown, that things will not remain the same. And then he gives you another assignment. He says, exalt those that were abased. In other words, when you take off their crown, their, their diadem and remove their crowns, uh, you are going up because there are people that as far as they are alive, as long as they are alive, you can't rise. I don't know who is sitting on your promotion. I don't know who is sitting on your rising. I don't know who is writing evil against you. I don't know who has written something incriminating into your file that you know nothing about just to frustrate your destiny. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Very soon that person is going to be removed out of your way. In the name of Jesus, 
my God is working for you because you are about to rise. The Bible says, obey. The Bible says, you know, exalt those that were obeys. I don't know who brought you low, but it is your season. It is your season. Thank you, Jesus, because you are going up. You are rising. You are rising above the average. You are rising above that level that your family people used to stop. You are crossing the bar. You are hitting the target and exceeding. You are breaking the limit. You are destroying the jinx. Glory be to God. I, I begin to congratulate you because I see you lifted up. I see you exalted. God says uh, as you exalt yourself by the power of the word of God bring down those who were exalted. Obey those who were high. Those who were talking on the streets as if there is nobody available. As if they are the, the alphas and the omegas. Those who were talking as if they are omnipresent and only omniscience. As if they see everything. As if they are everywhere. They even have some names that are very intimidating. How many of you know that agents of the devil have other names, demonic diabolical names in their realms of darkness? The name they bear on earth is different from the ones they bear in the witchcraft region. Yes sir, here in the world and even in church they bear Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Mary, Elizabeth, but in the other realm, they bear some diabolical, dirty names that I wouldn't want to mention here on earth. If you are a witch, you know what I'm talking about. But God is asking you to return to him. If you are an agent of the devil who delights in, the, in, in, in seeing others in pains and in tears and in sorrow, you delight in people crying and weeping. You delight to see dead bodies. God is giving you an offer right now to repent. You better call me. You better text me or WhatsApp me and I'll give you direction. I'll tell you what to do because you can escape. You can escape. You cannot live like an animal just believing in bloodletting, bloodbath. If you, if you de de delight in drinking blood, human blood. You have even a blood bank from where blood flow in as people are being, innocent people are being slaughtered. You are under judgment except you repent. But Jesus Christ loves you. He hates your sin. He, he hates your wickedness, but he loves you. He hates sin, but loves the sinner. Today is yours. Tomorrow may be too late because this may be the last gospel message you are hearing before you meet your doomsday or before you die or before Jesus Christ returns in glory. So I offer you a chance to receive the life of God. And I want you to know that the power of the Holy Ghost can help you do greater exploits than, than what you're doing for the devil. People like us, we cannot receive any other offer because the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us is greater than that which is in the world. Other powers bow to the power of the Lord Jesus. So I give you chance to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're receiving the Lord, just type there, I'm saved. I'm saved. Or type there, salvation. Or I'm delivered. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you whose name was already written down for destruction. Maybe tonight, you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. I do not know, but hear ye the word of the Lord. I travel in the realms of the Spirit as an angel of the Lord, and I deliver you. Even if they had already turned you to an animal to slaughter you tonight, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. You will not die their death. You will not sing their song. You will not cry their cry. You will never be a victim of mass burial. You will never be a victim of mistaken identity. You will never be a victim of stray bullets. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I deliver you by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, if the Son, that is Jesus Christ, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You are free in the name of Jesus. Whoever tortured you with that sickness, in Jesus' name I return that sickness 
back to sender and I set you free. What medical science cannot do, the God of signs and wonders is doing in your body right now. I command that pain to cease. In Jesus' mighty name, check your body. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from that destruction. Somebody, check that pain on your left hand. It's gone. That cold in your body is fizzling out. In Jesus' mighty name, by the heat of the fire of the Holy Ghost, that cold leaves you. That pneumonia leaves you. In Jesus' mighty name, I don't know what is affecting one of your eyes and you cannot see well. You, 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 you seem to see some spot of darkness from that eye. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are healed. Begin to check in Jesus' name. Check your healed, your healed. Another person is listening to me. You could not read tiny, tiny writings. In Jesus' name, you are healed. Look for a Gideon Bible or any tiny writing and begin to read right now in jesus mighty name somebody you were not able to walk you had been holding i'm seeing you in the realm of the spirit holding a stick a walking stick some crutches in jesus mighty name i command you to throw it away and begin to jump you are healed by the power of the lord jesus christ in jesus mighty name begin to do the things you could not do before you are healed healed on your ears healed on your head that pain is gone in jesus mighty name that my migraine migraine headache is gone and gone forever i command your blood pressure to return to normalcy lay your right hand on your chest and say i am healed in jesus mighty name god says i should tell you i'm going to fight that battle for you that fire disaster will not happen that child will not be brought home dead you will not receive a corpus in jesus precious name i pray for you bad news is not your portion in the name of jesus in case you are believing god for the fruit of the womb i want you to know that it is possible it is possible who called you barren that was too early Whoever called you barren called you too early. God has changed your story. By the mandate of fruitfulness upon my ministry, I command that womb open in Jesus' mighty name. Whether you ovulate or not, whether you menstruate or not, I don't care. But I care what, what the word of God says. None shall be barren among the children of God. Lay your right hand on your womb or your tummy, if you are a man, a miracle has happened right now. Something is turning in your tummy. It's a sign that a miracle has happened. God has given you the desire of your heart, the baby of your choice. In Jesus' mighty name, receive it. Receive money to pay that debt. Receive that capital and start that business. In Jesus' mighty name, I frustrate the spirit of suicide in your life. I bring hope back to you, courage and encouragement to you. In Jesus' mighty name, where one door was closed against you, seven doors shall open up for you. An alert is entering that phone that is about to turn around your life for good. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You like to live to ask Jesus into your life, receiving his life and becoming a child of God. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I respond to your word. I, I declare with my mouth that you are God. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I am saved. I am born again today. I receive the Holy Ghost. And I receive the grace to stand for you in this degenerating generation. Congratulations if you have received the life of God into your spirit. Congratulations. Can you please text or WhatsApp me on the number on your screen? I'll be delighted to respond to you favorably. Send me your testimonies from the previous editions of this broadcast and I'll be glad to share um, this joy with you. 
And I want you to know that it is about God. It is all about Jesus. It is not about me. Whatever miracle you receive, Jesus alone be praised. If you want to see me, come any of the witness days between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And I'll talk with you one on one. Every witness day at Word Tabernacle or some of my estate of Oran Road by Basumo Gas Plants. It is well with you. I'll be glad to see you next Sunday in our Rema, two power packed Rema services, 7 to 9.30 or 9.30 to noon until I come your way again, same channel, more anointing. This is your brother Gabriel Nkenyan, the privileged general overseer of World Tabernacle Worldwide, asking you to always live in the utmost fear of God's word so you will be fruitful. I love you so much and be rest assured that I am praying for you. Bye-bye.